Our next speaker is Deb Nicholson. All right. Huh. All right. Uh, can you all hear me? Am I on the thing? Check, check. Is it? It's close enough. I, I, I mean, I can always hear me, but yeah. Um, uh, last year we did this, and uh, it didn't go to the recording because I was talking loud enough for the room to hear me without the microphone by accident or too much coffee. Um, Anyway, today we're going to talk about fast governance, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the, I offer this so that when you find yourself in one of these situations, you can either be like, oh, hey, that's great, or like, uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh, oh, oh, run away. Um, so uh, some of these things can be fixed. Uh, you have to decide your own input when we get to the bad and the ugly. If you're like, yeah, like I may, I may offer some thoughts on how you might fix that, but you can also just say like, nope, and leave. Uh, that part's up to you. So I am a, a FOSS policy nerd and a perennial volunteer with communities and events and things like that. I also work at the Software Freedom Conservancy, and we uh, host all of these lovely projects, and we help them with governance. Um, some need more help than others. I won't name any names, but um, that is one of the things that we help them with. Uh, so what is governance? Um, Governance is basically how you decide you're going to get things done. It's like how you arrange power and decision making within your project. Uh, for today's purposes, we are not going to be talking about land wars in Asia or any of that kind of super big picture governance. Uh, we're really just going to be talking about uh, small and medium sized projects and the things that happen when you tend to get a lot of opinionated but helpful volunteers uh, together in one place. Um, some of these will be also useful for projects that are large enough to like hire an open source programs manager. Um, but hopefully, if you've got someone spending full time on your things, you, you, you've, you've gone past a few of these problems. Um, so uh, like I said, small and medium, all different sizes, all different flavors of projects have governance. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. So the good. These are things where you're like, yeah, OK, uh, things are working. This is good. Um, you know, you, you might even think like, you know, that, that this project sparks joy or is delicious. Um, and and this, this is kind of drilled down into why that might be. Um, so first of all, good projects state their goals early and often. If you have gotten people together to help you work on something and they don't know why they're there, um, you're eventually going to have a divergence where uh, you have as many ideas about why you're there as you have people involved. And that's not a good place to be. Um, you have people like jumping into stuff, like whatever, like I thought we were trying to do this, Wait, we're not trying to, oh, whoops, well, I just spent a lot of project time and resources on doing something that nobody else wants us to do. Uh, you also need to talk about uh, methods. So. If, you, if you've got goals, and then you hopefully also have ideas about the ways that you intend to achieve those goals, um, you need to state those also early and often. So uh, you can write them down um, and keep them somewhere, like on your, you know, when you do meetings and talk about, like, here's what we're working on. Um, you know, and this, this could be any number of things, like you might, you can make your own rules and you can make your own types of methods. So you might say like, hey, we're going to be like a pure no money project, okay? Um, or you could decide we are going to take money, but we're not going to accept money from any more than like a certain percentage from any given company because we don't want them to have undue influence on the direction of our project. Uh, you could also say, we actually only want corporate sponsorship for some certain percent of our work, and we want to have community sponsoring the rest of our work. So that you can think, you can, it's not too hard to imagine how someone whose thumb is on the scale for 90% of your funding might have some uh, ideas about how the project goes that it will be very hard for you to say no to if the answer is, well, we just won't fund you next year. So the, you can set those things out in advance and decide, like, this is what the kinds of things we imagine doing, this is who we imagine being involved in our decision-making process, and then this is how we're going to set up who gets that say and how they get it. So um, 
Obviously, I hope that I don't have to belabor this too much in this room, but pick a license in advance. Because if you get people working on a code base and then decide to pick a license two years on, you're going to have a huge argument about what license should be on this project. So um, the earlier you do it, the better. You probably also want to talk about patents a little bit, just so you don't have folks that are like, oh, I was hoping we'd patent this and then we'd all get rich. Uh, because if that's not what everybody thinks is going to happen, then you're going to have a problem. Um, you know, so in, in general, your licensing and your business model have to match. Whatever it is you're going to do, like whatever it is you're going to do with the software, however you're going to interact with the community, you can't decouple those and decide them separately. They have to be decided in concert together because otherwise you'll get to a place where they don't match up. Um, and then I would say, plan for success. So there are a couple ways that you might do this. Um, one would be uh, making sure that you like trademark the name and the logo. So uh, it can be tricky if you have one project member that has some really like key project resources in their personal name, and then the project becomes really popular. Um, Pam Chesick did a great talk about this a few years back on um, like mirroring how not taking care of your trademark and stuff uh, and the name of your project turns into like a kind of a band split out nightmare where it's like, oh, we're the original platters and we're like the, the old school platters and everyone is trying to like cash in on the name of the project because they didn't pay good attention to who actually gets to use the name of the project. So plan for success so that when you have that success, it's very clear that those things are owned in common. Um, and so, you know, that's, uh, again, like, you know, don't just assume that it will somehow work out if you just jump and you're like, ah, whatever. Like, if we get rich, I'm sure we'll be great. We'll all still be super friends, right? Um, yeah. So uh, another thing for good governance is that transparency is good. Like, people should, you know, the... The inside should match the outside. Um, this is, if you did not know you were eating a green donut, ugh, right? Um, but if, uh, if you're like, oh, we're a community-driven project, and then you get inside and it's like, yeah, actually, like two dudes that work at this one company call all the shots. That's like, oh. So like, as soon as people find your inside, they're going to leave. <laughs> uh, and then plan for succession. And not having it be any weirder than it needs to be. Like, people have babies, they go to grad school, like, um, you know, w whatever. Uh, it, and that should be okay. It shouldn't be like, sure, have kids, you're dead to us. It's like, no, no, like, go take a few years and write down your stuff before you go, and, and we wish you well. And then maybe when a time comes later on and they're like, I'm done with grad school. How's the project doing? It's like, oh, yeah, we didn't say a little weird, snarky stuff about you when you left, so you could just come right back. Um, and, 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 like, you know, passing it on means that you, you know, someone is there to do the things next. Uh, you want to be organized enough, but not too organized, like, just over, like, you know, a micro it. Um, you know, so you can constantly kind of, like, take a look, like, oh, you know, hey, we were like a two meeting org last year, and now we're a seven meeting a week org. Like, do, do we need all these? So you can like continually prune and ask these questions. Uh, another thing that happens uh, when you're talking about like, hey, what's our project doing? What do we want to do? Like, people come up with ideas, especially if you've been in one of those meetings where coffee is served. And you've got, like, not an agenda, but, like, an hour to meet. And so people were like, oh, I know. We should do this. Like, or maybe we could redeploy it for flower delivery. And it's like, what? So pilot or table. So, like, if the idea is pretty good and there's, like, some consensus and people have talked about it, you can say, let's try that new idea as a pilot. We'll do it for two months. And if it works, it works, then great. Uh, as tabling, you can say, like, yeah, that's really off topic and or, like, uh, is, like, a situation that would be good when we've got, like, way more resources or something else, so let's table it. Uh, set your scope. Um, you, uh, oops, sorry, you might have to do this often as well, like, to continually check in and be like, how did we end up a flower delivery service on blockchain? That's, with, like... Was that what we intended? Um, and then uh, finally, goal services tactics. It's, um, 
you know, if you, uh, like understanding that your goal can't be the activity. So tactics are the activities that you do to reach your goal, but people mix and match them where they're like, oh, I thought our goal was to have a super awesome party hack fest. And it's like, well, that's like a product of us working together for a weekend, but that's not the goal of, you know, the project. So, the bad. Um, this, uh, this donut I found on Flickr is called the meth donut. <laughs> I don't think it's actually meth on there. Um, but yeah, so the bad stuff, sometimes people behave, like engage in these behaviors because they're like kind of so bad they're good or, or something. Like there's, there's something appealing about them, um, even if it's like kind of a bad idea. Um, so you get like kind of a, a short term not high, but, uh, you know, a short-term thing that doesn't really last in the long term. So uh, you can, one of these behaviors is where you expect that things will never change. Like, we'll just always be like this. Um, and, like, the, you know, we've got this niche occupied and nothing is ever going to change. Um, stuff melts. It goes away. The, the, you know, the thing that you started your project to fill might no longer be a thing people need. Um, Relying on everyone being friends forever. This is, um, I would love it, like that would be great. That's like, you're like, oh, in kindergarten I learned like you just don't like hit each other in the nose and then you're friends forever. And it's like, well, it's a little more complicated. Uh, sometimes related to this, money changes everything. Like, and, and some, some of the things that uh, can really help is like, I feel like you know, if you've got your goal and your tactics and your methods and your strategic plan in place, then it makes it harder for like a big windfall to like shake you off track. But if you haven't got those things in place, all of a sudden a big pile of money makes like the uh, behavior change a lot. Letting one person run everything, even if they're doing all the work, because they probably are if they're running everything, and this can be really bad. Um, especially if they're the loudest person in the room. Like, I, I don't know how many of you have experienced this, but uh, the, the loudest person in the room, this is not fun. Uh, you either have to help them find their way to learning to delegate a little bit and maybe sh inside voice a little bit. Um, and then if that works, that won't work, like you may have to help that person to the door. So I, I'm a firm believer in that like, if you care for people, letting them beha like, behave like like a cave person with a megaphone is you're not helping them. Um, no big picture conversations. This is also terrible where it's like, oh no, like we can't have any big picture conversations because our hair is on fire all the time because we set ourselves this crazy release schedule that we can't possibly meet. So we can never, ever, ever talk about what we're going to be doing in a year and a half because what? Yeah. And uh, so those, that's, that leads to badness. Then everyone's like, I feel like I was just here for like 10 years and it's been a month I, and I hate you all. Um, so, uh, so don't go down that road is what I'm saying. Uh, being allergic to organization is also bad. Like, you know, like, oh, I, I just don't like stuff so formal. And it's like, we can have meeting agendas and you can still attend that meeting without shoes. That's fine. Um, like, grrr. Um, being allergic to talking about money, like, this is also a weird one, like, um, it's, uh, oh, there was another slide there, but, uh, you know, like, if you never want to talk about money and you have some, this is not good. Uh, not being willing to kill your darlings, like, this is like, oh, but it's been so fun meeting at Steve's house, and it's like, the project is 400 people, like, we, I, I know we moved to the garage last year, but this is still not working. Um, even if it was super fun when there was three of you meeting at Steve's house. Uh, so this, you know, these are these are bad, bad, bad roots. That like, and to me, when I see this behavior, it's like it's like we actually don't want to grow. We want like a social club. We don't want a project that like brings in more people or uh, gets wide adoption. So the ugly. Those are things that are like, you just, nope, 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 nope. Um, this is in the US, obviously. Um, don't say we never gave you anything. Um, 
So ugly, no one knows why we're here. This is like the inverse, like, what are we, you know, you talk to each person and they're like, oh yeah, we're building a distribution. Another person's like, oh no, we're making version control. Another person's like, I thought we were just hanging out, putting stuff in envelopes. I don't, I have no idea what we're doing. Um, you know, so this is, this is not good. Like, you end up with like a bunch of people like over here, like confused. They think like we're doing this. It's, um, you, you, can't, you can't have people not understand what is happening because if they don't know who they're building it for, they're not going to succeed in building it for those people. Um, no shared value, so like, you know, and, and this can take a couple of different turns. Like, you know, like someone's like, oh, I want our project to be free software. And someone's like, yeah, or open core, whatever. It's like, <laughs> Like, that's not going to be sustainable. Or someone's like, oh, I feel like it's really important for us to have a code of conduct. And then you've got someone else who is like, you know, you, you're like, well, let's just like split the difference. Like, you can be libertarian free speech and call everyone names over here. And, and we'll, like, on the front end, tell everyone we're nice. Like, oh, yeah, that'll work. Great. Um, no shared expectations. This is also terrible. Like, you know, like, no one's in charge, or everyone's in charge. Which is it? Oh, it doesn't matter. Like, or maybe the person in charge is the person who's got the uh, password for the website. You're like, okay, I guess they're in charge. Um, this is this is bad. This is not make you look good. When you've got people doing all different things in the project, you're like, what is even happening? Why is that there? Um, <laughs> it's not good. Uh, or no one knows where the money is. Like. <sighs> Like, oh, yeah, opening a bank account was the most boring task, so we gave it to that person that showed up once. Um, uh, we think we might have their Twitter handle. Awesome. Uh, letting a missing stare be your uh, benevolent dictator for life? Like, oh, he's just a groper. Like, oh, no. Uh, or old-fashioned, or, you know, fill in the blank there. Because... Um, you will end up with more people like that that are like, I heard you guys were cool with gropers. Like, don't do that. Like, unless, unless you want that. I don't know what, there's like an adult cuddling group you can join if that's your thing. But, uh, but it should not be your software project. Um, decision making is mysterious. Like, road mapping just appears after a meeting of a secret cabal. Um, people will not stick around for this. They're like, people have other places they could go, other projects they could contribute to. They could join book clubs and not contribute to free software on their free time. Uh, so, you know, if they're like, oh, what, like, what are we doing now? Like, don't surprise people with big decisions. So, who can help you with some of this? It, uh, dis uh, assuming that you've decided you want to help with some of this. Uh, strategic planning, like, I cannot recommend it enough. If you're doing a project and you don't know where you intend to be in two years, then I, I don't know why you're still showing up. Um, just do it. You can also find a partner. Like, sometimes if you're like, oh, we've kind of got like a, like a wacky incubation thing. We're not sure where it's going. Like, maybe find a partner to do a little oversight. Uh, you could find a fiscal sponsor. Like, you know, you need to have a little more idea to be a part of the conservancy. There, there are other groups that you could join and be part of and, you know, plug in. They, they can help you with the bank account stuff so you don't have to figure out whose Twitter handle it's account, you know, the account is in. Um, so there's, like, a bunch, of, a bunch of things that you can do to, like, get some of that organization, like, injected into your project. Um, find some buddies. Like, if you're starting a project and you know a friend that has already started a project, you can talk to them. That's one of the great things about free software. The community will help you do the things that you don't already know how to do, um, provided you're not a jerk and maybe buy them a donut. So, uh, don't be afraid to outsource the stuff that you don't want to do. Don't just, don't just do stuff poorly because it has to be done, but you don't want to do it. Um, and then it's, it's pretty much always donut time. There's never, it's never too early or too late to start improving your governance. Uh, so I hope that you will do that. Uh, some other places, the opensource.com has some more resources for you on leadership and management. Some other talks you might find useful on this topic. And then uh, post your credits. And then I would be happy to take, what, like one question? <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Questions? Any questions? I'll be here also like the rest of the day and then tomorrow too, like around Fast Jam too. So if you have a question that you think of later, um, you can at me on, on Twitter or if you're if your message on search foo is good, you can find me there. Uh, Deb, you had a, an interesting URL from Shane, which was like choose, choose a foundation. foundation. Choose a foundation. Tell us what that's about. Oh yeah. Uh, so if you have a project that you think needs a fiscal sponsor, uh, needs a fiscal sponsor, and you don't know where to go, or you want to check out a few before you pick one, you can go to Choose a Foundation, and it has a list of a bunch of different um, potential fiscal sponsors for your free software project. Cool. Cool. I happen to know the most about Conservancy, and I assume other, other foundations may do this too, but one of the neat things I know about Conservancy is that they can help member projects with governance questions. Can you maybe say a couple of words about, you know, how Conservancy might help newly joined projects or prospective projects think about the governance choices they have to make? Yeah, so uh, for governance, the, the first thing that Conservancy helps you do is decide like who you're gonna um, who you're gonna let be part of your decision making process. So we set up a project leadership committee for all of our projects. Uh, we ask that they keep it not too heavy with any particular company, so that they don't have to worry about like that later on down the road. Um, and then we always talk to the, we talk to them like over time about like, hey, are you raising money? What are you raising it for? What kinds of things do you want to spend it on? What's your roadmap? So we, we ask projects to continually be thinking about those things. Thanks. OK, another question up here. Uh, have you found a, a correlation between uh, quality of governance and the license that the project speak? Like, does a more permissive license, like, uh, so what's the what yeah what's the correlation between the governance and the license that you pick? So uh, the license that you pick can dictate or it can recommend certain uh, foundations for you as a fiscal home, but um, as far as I mean. As I said before, like your plans for your software should match your license. So when you're doing strategic planning and talking about like what do you want to do, what do you want to have your relationship with the community be, what if anything are you interested in monetizing, then you should be talking about the license that you're choosing with that. So if your idea is like we're going to use a copyleft license and uh, we are highly depending on the community to participate and evangelize and make this a really popular project, and then you're like, cool, how come someone's stuck on the end of our strategic plan that we would be selling licenses and sticking DRM into the code? Because those are, those are not compatible, right? Um, you know, for permissive stuff, there are, there are other different kinds of things you can do. There are other business models that lend themselves to permissive licensing if, if business is what you're looking at. Um, you know, and then different kinds of partners. So like if you're, um, you know, if you're looking to have a partner on your code base, then, you know, it probably matters, like, how well you match them culturally a little bit, like, license-wise, attitude towards free software. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, great. Thank you so much, Deb. Thank you.